Hey there, A Bird for Nymphem. Here we are, Remington 700 Rescue res Resurrection Part 3. Going to go over parts that have arrived, parts that we're not going to be able to use other than the stock. And we're going to dive into the bolt a little bit today and start getting that prepped up to get polished and ready to go back in when, unfortunately, a major component will have to be ordered. Already got an idea on how I'm going to do that, but first and foremost, let's go over what has arrived. The Magpul Hunter long action stock is here. Also, the floor plate that it's going to allow us, or me, the chance and the opportunity to go ahead and run 30 odd 6 from a box magazine when we get the final, well, the rough up assembly and then the final assembly, assembly ready to go on this rifle. Maybe I need more black rifle coffee or less. More. Always more. When in doubt, more. Okay. So that's good news. But project ran into a snag. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get my borescope to get me really good footage to use. Otherwise, I would put it in the video. What I have done, though, and I'm not sure if it's going to show with the lighting on the bench. Yes, it will. I can see it in the monitor right there that you can't see. I had to take a quick little interlude. Customer came in. Not the end of the world. That's what we're here for. So, like I was saying, this barrel, where it's got the X in the circle, that's right about where the bore, bore camera stopped. And um, it's not going to be able to be used. So I will be doing the Savage Style Lock Nut Remash Barrel for a 700. I haven't done one of those. I have done some 700 barrels. And it's going to be a lot easier. Probably just do a 24-inch Hunter Profile Bull Style Barrel. It won't be as big as this bench rest barrel. But enough of that. So on to the bolt. And if I get in, there we go. That's the right angle. So the bolt's, uh, bolt's a little grody. To the point of normally taking a Remington 700 bolt apart. I normally just use my 550 cord. Loop it around my vise. Around my handle. And then all you got to do is get the 550 cord. To lay up on the bottom lug of the firing pin, like so. And then when they're not all gummed up and rusted from being in a fire and having a fire put out, you can get them to come back easier. But what I do sometimes when they're stuck, I get my 100 mile an hour tape and I put some on the inside of my vice jaw so that now I can get that straight edge again, right here, boop, boop, to go ahead and grab right there. And then I get a very expensive tool, a dime. So the dime is going to allow me to lock the firing pin to the rear because there is a little notch in the top of the firing pin. And after you get it pulled back, you put your dime in like so. Now, all you got to do is simply, ooh, she's grody. Go ahead and spin that firing pin assembly out. Let's get a little look-see. There's a... Uh, there's some surface rust on the firing pin, not so much on the spring. We're looking good in the back and the threads as well. Looks like there's some old grease back there. But let's get another fancy tool. Let's get our little flashlight. And, yep, you won't be able to see it, of course, but maybe. Nope. So anyway, down here on the back side of the bolt face, going to have to get that scrubbed out. Now... One of the ways that I like to do it is I will actually take uh, probably a 45 brush and I'll put it on a cleaning rod that I've got set up and I'll put it on my cordless drill and then boop, stick it right in there and spin it up not at a high rate of speed on the drill and then one of the uh, greatest implements for these old rehabs is good old fashioned GI rifle bore cleaner solvent. It's, it's a bit to toxic when you use it where you got some ventilation. And uh, back to the Black Rifle Coffee. Pause. All right. So on the outside of the body, of course, everybody likes a nice, clean, polished bolt. This one, having been in a house fire, it's going to be a little bit different. But what I like to use is good old 3M stripping pads, the red one. 
and I cut myself off a little section and throw a little bit of oil on there just a few drops and let's do a little before and after all right so as you can see right there she's got some surface buildup and some crud and come over here and literally just hit it up so luckily it's not too bad and then if it's really bad what I'll do is I'll actually throw the rifle bore cleaner solvent onto the stripping pad and as you can see from the color it's uh, pulling up that surface rust and that crud from sitting with the bolt closed and evidently water down down the muzzle and sitting there and then just literally take a nice cotton rag and this is the end that's the result from the initial cleanup um, some people will go ahead and throw a um, stripping pad or a polishing pad onto a Dremel I'll probably do that around the locking lugs because I'm not wanting to remove material this is important I don't want to remove material I just want to get it cleaned up then on the bolt face itself see if I can hit the light just right it's not too bad I got in there um, there was actually some rust in there got in there with a good old carbon scraper or a dental pick and went ahead and got the rough stuff out so what I like to do is I like to flip it so that it's got the bevel up and use the flat side and then that way I can get the gross contamination out of the extractor ring and just run it across the bolt face like so and that'll usually get that cleaned up then what I'll do is I'll come back with a brush and uh, I try to stick with an AP brush if I can I'll actually take some q-tips and go back to my rifle bore cleaner good old GI bore solvent soak a q-tip in it actually get that lathered up get a good coat on there and then literally just let it set and give it 35 45 minutes come back in and just go after it like I don't like it and then get in there and clean it all out again and then after that phase is done then I'll be lined up to go ahead and pull what appears to be a broken extractor or it even looks like they might have taken the extractor and ground it down because remember back in the first part of this little series it was set up so that when you pulled a bolt to the rear it didn't take your brass and fling it out of the chamber you had to actually pick your brass off of the bolt face um, bench rest rifle makes total sense these guys are very precise about the reloading they also want to get a good look at their brass without denting it so this is part three stock is here floor plate is here with the magazine Unfortunately, the bore scope told us we're not going to be able to use the super heavy duty double throw me down badass bench rest barrel. That's okay. So we're going with the rematch. Now, I don't know how much of this, how much further I can really go in and showing different stuff um, without getting strikes and whatnot on YouTube. So what I will do is I'll go ahead and I'll get the bolt all cleaned up. And then when we come back for the fourth installment, the barrel will be clean. The barrel will be removed. Um, nobody, that's just. We're literally going to twist the barrel off the receiver using a barrel vise and a action wrench. But next episode, we'll go into cleaning up the receiver, cleaning up the trigger. I might actually, I have some other Remington 700 takeout triggers that were replaced with Timonies and whatnot. I might put one, just a stock trigger in it. And then we'll be ready to clean up the receiver. And hopefully shortly thereafter, the uh, remash. Savage style barrel will be here and we can go ahead and get that ready to go on do our initial fitment do our um, Headspace using our headspace gauges. I'll go ahead and show that I think I've seen that on YouTube So it should be good and uh, we'll move on from there because I'm not building a rifle. I'm rehabbing a rifle So everybody stay safe stay good Stay American and as always hydrate